I took the iPhone 15 Pro to the middle of nowhere to try to shoot the Milky Way and while I was at it over there I also put it against the iPhone 14 Pro, 13 Pro, 12 Pro and even my full frame camera that I'm shooting this video with and I wanted to see how much progress was made in this year's iPhone with the low light performance. Let's get into it. Looking at these four photos, which photo do you think was taken by which phone? Let's start with how you can take photos of the Milky Way. You need a night where there is no moon. It could be a new moon day or a day that the moon doesn't interfere with the Milky Way itself. I use an app called Sky View. I try to figure out the day and the time that the Milky Way will rise in the sky and to see if the moon will be in the sky at that time and date. Of course, you need to go to a place where there is no light pollution whatsoever and choose a night that won't have any clouds or fog so you can actually see the stars. Now to pack up you need a tripod for your phone because you wanted to keep it as steady as possible while taking the photos and just get company with you because it's always fun to stargaze with your friends. Now on the iPhone I use night mode and it's pretty good to capture the Milky Way. You put the night mode to the max at first it's gonna be at 10 seconds and then if you keep it steady for a couple of seconds it's gonna turn to 30 seconds and it's then when you are gonna tap very slightly on your phone to start shooting. If you want to get the most light keep it to 30 seconds but personally I like to keep it 15 seconds only because at 30 seconds the stars will move and the stars won't look as dots will have very small star trails at 15 seconds you won't the stars will be dots and personally I like that more but on the 15 Pro we have a slightly different situation we barely have any star trails I noticed that only the sides of the photo had some but still it's acceptable and that the 30 seconds photos are actually the best because they have the most details so know which settings to use with which phone you can of course tap at the top for the raw you have raw max and if you hold that button you see hive max and raw 12 the same settings are now on the 14 Pro as well. Personally the raw max and the default one kind of were the best and after you get back home you put the photo in Lightroom and then you can edit it and make it the way you want. Now comparing the 12 to the 13 to the 14 and the 15 starting from the 12 we can see that it doesn't have much details. It's the grainiest of the bunch of course and not much definition of the Milky Way itself both the raw and the default looked almost the same just slightly more flexibility with editing on the raw now moving on to the 13 Pro which is the most unique out of the bunch let's say as I said in the camera blind test video the 13 Pro colors are slightly different than all of them and while shooting the Milky Way we can see that it's the greenest out of the bunch now we can see the big jump from the 12 to the 13 we can see way more details of the Milky Way with the 13 Pro the first time that I shot the Milky Way with the 13 Pro I was really blown away of how much I was able to capture with the iPhone at that year now moving on to the 14 Pro the colors have shifted way too much now we get more purplish and orangey colors a slightly bluish colors as well but we can see the jump in the details and the definition of the milky way with the 14 pro now with the 15 pro we barely got any new hardware but now it's using 24 megapixels instead of 12 in the default setting but of course you can shoot raw on both the 14 pro and the 15 pro and shoot with the whole 48 megapixel sensor but even though it's almost the same hardware but we got slightly better results way less grain than last year a little bit more defined and well put together photo but what I found weird about these photos that I started shooting at first and it was bluish orangey and then the rest of the photos that I took it was splatter of orange and blue which was so hard to edit in post these are the different photos of the 15 pro and the different colors that i got of course different settings as well this is the photo that i liked out of the bunch it's not a raw photo but after doing some editing on it and color grading it turned out to be this way i really love how it turned out the details in the photo are amazing and if you put all the phones next to each other starting with the unedited photos photos straight out of the camera and then after editing each of them to the best of my ability to get the most results out of it now of course i also took a photo with the camera it is the one with the most details of course and it is the one that i can get the best picture of the milky way with but comparing it to the iphone it's really great that i can really count on a phone to shoot whatever I want, even the Milky Way. I went to Malaysia a month ago and I didn't take my camera with me. I only took my phone and, and the photos and the videos that I took with it were amazing. And I'm not saying that iPhones are the best, I'm just saying that smartphones nowadays 
can do so much and that we can really rely on them. I've received so much photos from you guys on Instagram, photos of the Milky Way and the galaxies taken by your Xiaomi phones, by your Samsung phones, and I was really surprised by how incredible and talented you guys are. So I want to do that again. I want to see more photos that you've taken of the Milky Way with your phones. Send me a, a DM on Instagram. Let's have a chat down below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you.